All right, so now let's uh, move uh, further. Now we'll take a look at vector algebra. So the question is, how do we add vectors algebraically? So uh, the figure below shows that if A has components A1, A2, and B has components B1, B2, then the sum is A plus B equals 2, and then you just add the components A1 plus B1, A2 plus B2, at least for the case where the components are positive. So let's take a look at geometrically. So we have, I'll write this like here, there's our y, there's our x, so x and y, there's the origin. And now let's take a look at where a, let's say we, we have the vector a, and this vector a goes over here, and yeah, I'll just move it over here. So this is the vector a, and it has components uh, right here. I'll just draw this uh, dashed line da, 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 like that, A2, and then this is A1. All right, so now that we have this A vector, and now let's take a look at the vector B, and it has components of B1, B2. And uh, yeah, remember this uh, B1, B2, these are just the position vectors of it, and they're the same as the difference between any two points uh, for other representations. So this one right here, a1, a2, it's uh, equals over to here. Yeah, right here, when you take the difference, you subtract these out, you're just left with a1, a2. So, now, so in other words, we can uh, put it like this. Let's say we have b that looks like this. Make it pretty big like that, just so we can have more space. So let's say we have b goes all the way up to here. This is the vector b right here. And then I'll just put this b with an arrow on top. All right, and now this has components, and uh, we got to be careful on this. So this component, this has to start from the base of the vector to the terminal end. So in other words, this is the base. So then uh, from here to the end, this one has coordinates or components B1. And then this com uh, component from, from here to here, this is our uh, B2 like that. Yeah, so I'll just put it like that. I'll just put the here, yeah, so just so we know it's... From here to here is yeah, it's from here to here is B2, like that. Whoops. And now we're gonna draw the combination vector. So we're gonna add A plus B, and we're gonna show that it's equal to well A1 plus B1, A2 plus B2. We're gonna draw this all the way across like that. Like that. This is gonna be our like that. This is gonna be our A plus B vector. And now you can see the uh, the coordinates right here. This one is just, well, from here to here. I'll just go from, um, yeah, let's go like that. From here all the way to, yeah, from here to here, this is just our A1 plus B1. Right here, just fix it up. So A1 plus B1, and then this from here to here, this top or to the bottom, that's just A2 plus uh, B2. So A2 plus B2. So in other words, this point right here, this point right here is going to be A1, let's put an arrow, or um, let's uh, put it like that. So this point right here is going to be A1 plus B1, and that's the coordinates, and then this is going to be uh, A2 plus B2. So yes, exactly as shown over here. Yeah, so you just sum that up algebraically. Yeah, so uh, in other words, uh, to add algebraic vectors, we add their components. We just add them up like that. Uh, similarly, to subtract vectors, we subtract components. And yeah, the calculus book didn't uh, draw this out for the subtraction, but I'll just do that here. All right, so let's go with our exact same setup above. And now we're going to go like this. This is our x, this is our y, there's our origin. We'll go, uh, we'll go a first. Let's say a is like this. And there's the, um, yeah, there's a setup. Or uh, actually, let's make it bigger. Just because we're going to be uh, subtracting, so it's going to be more convoluted. So uh, this is going to be a, like that, has components. Uh, the components are, uh, this is a2, and there's a1, like that. All right, so now to subtract a vector, well, that just means adding a negative vector. So in other words, uh, we could just write this, uh, let's say we have a vector like here, it goes all the way across here, and we'll call this a B vector, and it has components, 
let's draw these as positive. This is going to be B2 is the vertical, and there's the B1 is the horizontal, like that. Now, if we take the negative of it, well, that's going to go all the way down, and this is going to have components. There's going to be negative B1, so it's a negative vertical one, and then uh, we're going to have to draw a, a full on like this. I'll just do this here. Dash line like this. And this is going to be all the way here. This is going to be our uh, negative B2. So it's a negative of it. And yeah, just extend this over like that. All right. So then uh, just to point it out that this whole negative B2 is at the bottom there. And now this is going to be yeah, the negative B uh, vector. Or better B. And now from here to here, this is going to be, well, A plus, because we go from the tip, so the tip there, so we're going to plus negative B vector. And now this just equals to uh, A vector minus B vector, like that. And now this coordinates right here, this point right here, this is just equal to, yeah, here, just uh, move this over to here, and then, yes, yeah, so this point's going to be, well, just going to be uh, A1 minus uh, B1, and then the second one is going to be A2 minus B2. And you can see this here, yeah, because this horizontal distance from here to here, which is going to be the, uh, the, the horizontal component, this one right here is equal to, well, A1, plus negative B1. So in other words, this is just going to be A1 plus negative B1, and then those just become uh, negative. You just see that already. So B1, like that. So we take uh, this part all the way from here to here, subtract this out, becomes this. Now the vertical component from uh, here to here, this part right here, let's draw it like this. This is going to be, well, A2, and then plus this negative B2, in other words, a2 minus B2, and then what we'll do is we'll take this segment, we'll take this top one, and then subtract by this uh, top one, uh, this uh, bigger one here, and you just get this negative side over there. So yes, that is this part right here. So we just subtract the components. Yeah, exactly the same as this one here. So add, or and then add and subtract the same thing, but you're adding the negative side. All right, and now, and now if we look at scalar, so from the similar triangles in the figure below, we see that the components of C, which is scalar times by A, the vector, are just CA1 and CA2. So what we'll see is, let's just draw this out right here. So if we have this vector, we'll call this uh, A vector, it has components of, like this, and the components are A2 is a vertical, A1 is that. And now let's make the exact same one, but a similar triangle. I'm just going to take this exact same line, just copy and paste it. It says exact same one. Move it over to here. And uh, let's just uh, expand this out in the exact same line. So we're ex the angle's exactly the same. So we're shifting this over. And the similar triangles here, this is going to be a, an angle like that, theta. When you're shifting it, this is just going to be scaling this bottom part, CA1. So it's the same exact angle. So if it's the same angle, the ratios have to be the same. The only way the ratios can be the same are as if the, there's this the constant C right there. And this is a CA2. So in other words, the components are just multiplied there. And notice the, uh, the ratio A2 over A1 is equal to, let's put this here. Yeah, A2 over A1 is equal to CA2 over CA1, and these cancel. So it has to have the exact same one, right angle, like that. And then this is the vector, and this is going to be C. So remember, when it's components, uh, are the, yeah, all you're doing is changing the components by uh, just scaling that up. It's, you're just scaling the vector up. Because remember, the, uh, the vector just points to that point there, and that point's going to be the CA1. Time, and the CA1 is the horizontal and the vertical CA2. And yes, so that is what we have. All right, so uh, to multiply a vector by a scalar, so vector by a scalar, we multiply each component by that scalar. So multiply these each other, it just means you're multiplying the components. So if the vector A has components A1 and A2, and the vector B has components B1, B2, then a plus B is just equal to the components added to each other, A1 plus B1. 
and a2 plus b2. And then subtraction, we just subtract the components. And then the scalar, we just put the scalar, multiply the components by that scalar. Similarly, for three-dimensional uh, three vectors, we have this a1. Uh, so th this vector right here with components a1, a2, a3. Another one, b1, b2, b3. We just add all the components. And likewise, uh, subtract all the components. And likewise, we can uh, multiply this by scalar all the components. It's fascinating, fascinating stuff. All right, let's continue further. Now let's take a look at example four. So if we're given that the uh, vector A has components four, zero, three, and the vector B has components negative two, one, and five, we're asked to find the length of the vector A and the vectors A plus B, A minus B, and three times B, and 2a plus 5b. All right, now let's take a look at the solution. So the length of the vector a, well, we just know that from our Pythagoras, this just equals to all well, the square root of the components squared uh, and added up of the sum of the squares of the components. So this is going to be uh, 4 squared plus 0 squared plus 3 squared. This equals to, well, 4 squared is equal to 16. 0 squared is 0. 3 squared is 9. And 9 plus 16, that is 25. And then square root 25, this equals 2, well, 5. And we are, we're ignoring negative here, because square root 25 it could be plus or minus 5 there. Yeah, I, I will state that just because it's an interesting tidbit. So we have 5 is our answer for the length here. Now we're asked to vectors a plus b. So a vector plus b vector equals 2. Yeah, equals two. Let's just write these out, and then we're going to combine all of the um, uh, components. So this is four, zero, three, and then this is going to be uh, the next one is plus the b one is over here, negative two, and then uh, one, and then five. Yeah. Now we just add the components. This equals two, four plus so four plus negative two. And then we'll have 0 plus 1. Then we'll have 3 plus 5. Like that. And now this equals 2. 4, yeah, so 4 plus negative 1 is just 4 minus, I mean, uh, plus uh, negative 2 is 4 minus 2 is 2. Next one is 0 plus 1 is 1. 3 plus 5 is 8. Like that. So that is our A plus B. So we're solved this one. All right, so now the next one is subtracting. So a minus b. So a vector minus b vector equals 2. So let's write this out for completeness. 4, 0, 3. Uh, the components of the first one of a. Like that. Make this better. 0. Minus. And now we'll have a negative 2, 1, 5. Like that. And again, this equals 2. This equals 2. This is going to be 4. Instead of plus, we'll go minus now. Minus negative 2. And then we're going to get a 0 minus 1. Then we're going to get 3 minus 5, like that. Now this equals 2. So 4 minus negative 2 is going to be 4 plus 2, which is 6. So two negatives become a positive. So this is a 6. And then we'll have 0 minus 1 is, well, just negative 1. And then the last one is 3 minus 5 is negative 2, like that. So yes, now we can box this in. And now the next one, that is going to be, well, this 3 times b. So 3 times b is just going to be, well, 3 scalar times by b vector. This equals 2. And uh, the b1 is just negative 2, 1, 5. So this equals 2. 3 times it by, and then we'll have the uh, vector form, the components, negative 2, 1, 5. And now this equals to multiply that inside each one. So this becomes, uh, this is going to be 3 times negative 2, 3 times 1, and then 3 times 5, like that. And now this equals to, well, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And then, or uh, so what I'll do is, I'm going to write this uh, down here. This equals to 3, uh, negative 6. 
and then the next one, 3 times 1 is 3, and the next one is 3 times 5 is 15. Like that. So we have negative 6, 3, and 15 as the components of 3 times b. All right, and now I think the last one, yeah, so 2a plus 5b. So we'll write 2a, yeah, so 2a plus 5 times by this, the vector b. So again, uh, 4, 0, 3, negative 2, 1, negative 2, 1, 5. All right, so this equals to 2 times, let's for completeness write this out, so 4, 0, 3, and then plus 5 times negative 2, 1, 5, like that. Negative 2, 1, 5. All right. Multiply this inside. This is going to be, well, 2 times 4. Or instead of just writing that, uh, calculus book just skips it all, just writes it straight up. So 2 times 4 is 8. Z 2 times 0 is 0. 3 times 2 or 2 times 3 is 6. And now plus, and now we do over here. So uh, 5 times negative 2, that is negative 10. Next one, 5 times 1 is 5. Next one, 5 times 5 is 25, like that. And now we're going to have to add the components. So this equals 2. So this equals 2, and just uh, do this all, all in one go. So 8 minus 10 is equal to negative 2, like that. The next one is 0 plus 5 is 5. Next one is 6 plus 25, that's 31. Yes, that is what we get. All right, so now let's go further. And now we denote by V and then subscript 2, or v, v sub 2, the set of all two-dimensional vectors. And yeah, basically all two-dimensional vectors, we'll just say it's all inside this set here. We'll call this V2. And by V3, the set of all three-dimensional vectors. So uh, more generally, we will later need to consider the set Vn of all n-dimensional vectors. Yes, yeah, so instead of two-dimensional or three, Vn is just all of them. An n-dimensional vector is an uh, ordered n-tuple, right? Yeah, instead of a triple or double, you got a tuple. This is an n, n amount. And uh, you could write this uh, vector as a, is bolt, bolt a equals two, and then the components a1, a2, dot, 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 all the way to a n where a1, a2, and an are, are real numbers that are called the components of a. And addition and scalar multiplication are redefined in terms of components, just as for the case uh, n equals to 2 and n equals to 3. So yes, um, yeah, the definitions still hold uh, as for case n and case uh, 3, and you could go at any number of components in this. Uh, the definitions still hold, the addition and scalar multiplication and so on. And continue further. So, so now, uh, just a note on n-dimensional uh, vectors. So vectors in n dimensions are used to list various quantities in an organized way. For instance, the components of a six-dimensional vector. So you have, let's say, a vector p equals the components uh, p1, p2, p3, p4, p5, and p6 might represent the prices of six different ingredients required to make a product. So in this case, this set would be uh, for uh, all the prices for a specific, um, yeah, for a specific product with ingredients, so prices of ingredients, and so on. And uh, four dimensional vectors, uh, x, y, z, and t, are used in, uh, in relativity theory, uh, where the first three components specify a position in space, so x, y, z, and the fourth represents time. So yes, you can go, um, you can have different dimensions and so on. Yeah, and then use uh, n-dimensional n vectors to describe them. 